All right. Logger Pro Video Part 2. The sequel. Bigger, badder, better than ever. All right. In the last part, if you remember, we looked at how to take sound data from the sound card oscilloscope, capture it, put it in the right form, ready to be pasted into Logger Pro, and then actually paste it in. Um, we talked about analyzing it. Now, we didn't really analyze it before. We just basically got it on the screen. What we actually want to look at now is how to analyze that data once you've captured it. In other words, basically what you're going to be doing is just working out the frequency of that wave. So, you know, I played a note on the whistle, made a noise, I captured the noise on the screen. I have no idea what frequency that was, no idea at all. But Logger Pro can actually analyze it and work out that frequency for me, which is a very, very powerful tool. Okay, so fire up Logger Pro. That's the same piece of data I had last time. So we're beginning this video by assuming you've done everything in part one. Right, so once we have that there, it's actually pretty damn simple. Um, I'm just gonna click, drag to highlight all of this waveform. So just click and drag across the whole thing or enough of it that the computer can get the pattern. Um, and then up here, I've got a whole bunch of different options. Now I'm gonna choose the analyze menu and I'm going to go down here for a curve fit. Now it gives me a whole bunch of options here of different um, equations I can try and do a line of best fit with. Now in this case, it's going to be one of those sinusoidal waves we were talking about before, or what we call a sine wave. Remember the reason we call it a sine wave is because in higher order maths, the sine function, the sine of an angle, produces that kind of a graph when you sort of um, graft against time for a rotating object or for a sound wave. So I'm actually gonna go down here through all of my different options. I'm gonna go basically to the bottom. And then the third from the bottom is a sign option. So I click on that. And then I choose the option that says try fit here. And then I go okay. And I don't know if you can actually see this on the screen. It's a little bit hard but it's put a little black sine wave over the top as the line of best fit. Now that little black sine wave is described by four different variables or four parameters we call them. Um, so when you think about parameters, it's a little bit like when you have a quadratic equation. Remember you have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The values of a, b and c are your parameters for a quadratic. They're the three numbers you need to describe it basically. Um, similar here, there are four numbers you need to describe a sine wave of any kind. Um, now we're only interested in one of those. So in this little window here, it tells me those four parameters. I'm just interested in the value that they call capital B here. So according to Logger Pro, that's 2705 plus or minus blah 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 blah. We're not interested in the plus or minus part, we're just interested in the raw value for B. So 2705. Now that is not the frequency of this sound wave, although it's very close. What it actually gives me is something called the angular frequency. So angular frequency in physics is represented by this little guy here. It looks like a curly W, but it's actually the Greek letter omega in the lower case. So omega is what we call the angular frequency. Now you don't need to understand too much about that in year 11 or year 12. But it's basically just a uh, mathematical thing. If you're going to model a sine wave or anything like that, sorry, if you're going to model a sound wave or anything like that using a sine function, then you have to use an angular frequency rather than a frequency. Um, so that's a bit complicated, but basically it's not too hard once you've found the angular frequency because the relationship between the angular frequency and the normal frequency f is given by this here. Angular frequency equals 2 pi times phi f. So all I need to do now is take that value for omega and divide it by 2 pi to get f. So I might do that very quickly. Fire up my calculator. Now the value was, let me just go back and double check, 2705. Okay, so I go 2705 divided by two times pi
equals. Okay. And I don't know if you can see how clearly you can see that, but that's 434.5 hertz, which is about right. That's about the sort of frequency I was playing on that whistle, roughly. So basically, use Logger Pro to work out the angular frequency by putting in a sine curve fit to it. And then take that angular frequency and divide it by 2 pi, and that'll give you the frequency of the wave. And that will work for um, pretty much anything. So in this case here, if I kind of like zoom in on this guy, I should. At the moment, it doesn't look much like one of those sine waves because that's actually been fairly compressed. There you go. But if I stretch it out, it looks a fair bit like a sine wave. Um, so in this case, it was easy to put a sine best fit curve over it. Um, but that's not always going to be the case. But even if you have something that's a lot rougher, you sh can sometimes put a sine best fit curve to it and get the frequency from that. So if you had a like a triangle wave or a square wave, um, quite often you can use this best fit curve function in Logger Pro to put a sine best fit curve against it and then use that to work out the angular frequency and then use that to work out the frequency. Okay, so this is a very useful skill. You'll be using this a lot in the sound experiments you have to do. And uh, also, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, when you go to do your des first design practical later on this semester, you're gonna find that this program and the curve fit function are gonna be very, very useful. So bear that in mind and make sure you understand how to do this. All right, I'm out.